So let's talk about a tale of two insurrections. How things were handled today in the courts versus how they were handled in Congress. Because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So let's take on a tale of two insurrections. Because for the Republicans in the Senate, today was the best of times. Because today, they got to vote against being investigated. But for the insurrectionist defendants in court, the last 48 hours have been the worst of times. Because over the past two days, Judge Amy Berman Jackson, a federal district court judge sitting in Washington, D.C., issued two written orders denying the request from two different insurrectionist defendants to be released pending trial because they are jailed presently pending trial. The first one I want to talk about is a guy named Cleveland Meredith Jr. And here is how CNN reported that out. Headline, Judge says Trump's steady drumbeat of the big lie could continue to inspire his supporters to take up arms. And that article begins, a federal judge on Wednesday wrote that Donald Trump's big lie that the 2020 election was stolen from him could still inspire some of the former president's supporters to take up arms as they did in January during the deadly U.S. Capitol insurrection. And then the article goes on to quote Judge Jackson, quote, the steady drumbeat that inspired the defendant to take up arms has not faded away. Six months later, the canard that the election was stolen is being repeated daily on major news outlets and from the corridors of power in state and federal government, not to mention in the near daily fulminations of the former president, close quote. Judge Amy Berman Jackson of the D.C. District Court wrote in an opinion to keep defendant Cleveland Meredith Jr. in jail because he could endanger the public if released. Let me turn to a second insurrectionist defendant, a guy named Carl Dirsch, who is jailed pending trial, filed a motion with Judge Jackson seeking to be released pending trial. And just yesterday, Judge Jackson issued a 28-page order, a legal ruling denying his request to be released pending trial. Now, I urge you all to read those 28 pages because it is eye-opening just how dangerous these insurrectionists are and how they continue to be fueled in that danger by Donald Trump and others. But I want to just uh, quote one short passage from Judge Jackson's 28-page ruling, and this has to do with some statements that this particular insurrectionist, Carl Dirsch, made the day after the insurrection. On January 7, 2021, the defendant commented on somebody else's Facebook post saying, quote, Mike Pence gave our country to the communist hordes. He's a traitor scum like the rest of them. We have your back. Give the word and we will be back even stronger. Defendants promise to take action in the future cannot be dismissed as an unlikely occurrence, given that his singular source of information, his being the defendant, this particular insurrectionist, Carl Dirsch, His singular source of information, Donald Trump. And then Judge Jackson quotes this defendant as saying, Trump's the only big shot I trust right now. Continues to propagate the lie that inspired the attack on a nearly daily basis. Donald Trump continues to propagate the lie that inspired the attack on a nearly daily basis. And the anger surrounding the false accusation continues to be stoked by multiple media outlets 
as well as the state and federal party leaders who are intent on censuring those who dare to challenge the former president's version of events. So folks, those two orders, those two legal opinions issued this week by Judge Amy Berman Jackson, and let me tell you, she is one heck of a good federal court judge. Issued by Judge Jackson this week on Wednesday and Thursday, denying release for these two insurrectionist defendants, that's Judge Jackson using those facts that she articulated about the danger posed by Donald Trump, by his media lapdogs, by the, quote, state and federal party leaders to con continue to stoke this violence. Those are facts as announced in those two orders by a federal judge. They're not alternate facts. That's not fake news. Those are facts that she articulated, and facts are stubborn things, especially when found by and relied upon by federal court judges in making their rulings. And folks, even Donald Trump judges get it. And you know why they get it? Because if Donald Trump's autocracy is allowed to take over, guess what? It will have no use for the judiciary. I mean, an autocracy has no need for a judiciary who is in place in part to pass on the lawfulness, the propriety of what the executive branch is doing. If the executive branch is an autocracy, it ain't gonna have no respect for the judiciary. It's not gonna have any need for the judiciary. This is why even the Donald Trump appointed judges get it. Why do you think all 65 cases were rejected when Donald Trump tried to overturn the election results? The fact that the judiciary gets it is a good thing. It's an important thing. And at the end of the day, it may very well be a republic saving thing. Okay, now let's just briefly turn to today's travesty in the Senate, because today the Senate Republicans voted not to investigate the attack on the Capitol. Put another way, the Republicans voted against investigating their own potential complicity in the insurrection. As I said yesterday, you know, this is no different than a bank robber voting against investigating bank robberies. But let's end with this, the vote. 54 senators voted in favor of an investigation, 35 senators voted against an investigation and 35 wins. 35 beats 54. Doesn't that kind of feel like the opposite of democracy? You know, it sure doesn't feel like justice, but that's okay. Remember what the Republicans did when they were confronted with a similar circumstance? They wanted to investigate Benghazi. What did they do? Oh, they investigated Benghazi, all right, by setting up a House Select Committee. And I predict that's exactly what Nancy Pelosi will now turn her attention to. Because the insurrection, the attempted violent overthrow of the government, the attack on the U.S. Capitol on January 6th will be investigated. Even if it has to be by a House Select Committee, which in the long run may be the better investigation. But it will be investigated. Because justice matters. Folks, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.